Uh, hello, Doctor. Hello, how are you today? Uh, I'm all right, thank you. Uh, how may I call you? Um, uh, Miss Johnson. Mr. Johnson, how can I help you? Uh, well, uh, you know, Doctor, uh, I've got this headache for the last three months, and um, yeah, I just wanted to see um, if uh, I could do something about that. Um, yes. And it's uh, uh, it just um, random, and uh, it happens uh, maybe once a week or twice a week. Um, and then uh, at least four times uh, in a month. And then uh, what happens is uh, uh, I get this headache in the, my left eye and uh, the left side of the head, and it uh, lasts about uh, maybe three days. And uh, uh, yeah, so it is pulsating and um, it's very difficult to describe, but uh, it's it's quite bad. It makes me sick, and then um, I cannot concentrate on anything. And um, yeah, light and noise annoys me. Um, yeah, it's uh, yeah, that's it. Uh, uh, so, uh, what do you think it is, doctor? Uh, I I understand that it could be very hard for you. I'm sorry that you have this bad experience. Uh, do you think that uh, the pain is al always just in this part of your head, or? Uh, yes, it's always, and uh, on the left side uh, around my eye, and it's pulsating. Uh, and I, I used to take uh, ibuprofen, um, and I uh, read through the internet and uh, looked at the uh, migraine and uh, the treatment of migraine relaxation techniques and that sort of thing, but it doesn't work really. I see. So, does it ever go to another region or is it just here? Um, yeah, it's just here on the left okay, side, perfect. yeah, around my eye. So, what medications are you? Uh, do you take any other medications unrelated to a migraine? No, no, that's, um, um, that's it, yes. So, so the way I understand it, your main concern is that you want to send the episodes to a stop. Uh, well, in fact, doctor, I, um, you know, I had a friend who had a, a brain tumor, and um, so uh, and it started with uh, with headache. So uh, I, I think I would want to have an MRI scan uh, yes. to see if I have a, a tumor or something. Do you think you have any symptom be beside your headaches, which are typical for migraine, that could be because of tumor? Um, well, I, uh, I think it's not migraine because uh, it, it uh, lasts about three days. Uh, I read that uh, migraine lasts uh, less than twenty-four hours or something like that, and then, but um, and I feel sick, so I, I think that's that's why it might be um, a brain tumor. Yeah, that's usually the typical presentation, but it could take longer in some cases. So it's not unexpected that it takes longer. And do you have any feeling of numbness in your face or any part of your body? No. Do you have any experience of vomiting early in the morning? Um, not in the morning. When I get the pain, it is, uh, I feel a nosis and I oh. can't but eat never anything. in the morning, right? No, not really. So it's very, it's very unlikely that it's related to any tumor. You're just as likely and in anyone in the nor in the general population to have it. So I don't think that MRI is necessary for you. Do you agree with that? Um, well, um, yeah. I, t t some something that I notice is when I move my head, it gets worse. So that's what I thought. Maybe there's something in my head which is uh, moving and pressing and that's why I, I thought. If, if you, I checked for your symptoms that could be because of the a tumor, like if you have numbness or any weakness in any part of your body or you have vomiting in the morning and you don't have any of them. So it's very unlikely that it's related to that. And your other expectation is to take care of your chronic problem and it's you said that you tried some techniques but they weren't helpful i think the drugs that you used by now were just for the treatment of the acute episode 
So you can use some drugs that are used for prophylaxis of migraine. They can prevent the further attacks. Okay, thank you. Uh, all right, run out of time. Uh, good, but we have, I think you covered that. Uh, so, uh, how how do you feel? Uh, it, is the, if the patients are this helpful on the exam day, I'll be okay. <laughs> it depends on the scenario, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, it's uh, um, what, uh, what it says in the, in the card and in the scenario. Sometimes they, uh, they are not uh, very cooperative and they actually insist and they say, no, I, I definitely want an MRI scan. Um, but uh, yeah, so uh, a headache in 33-year-old uh, uh, man, okay, uh, asking for MRI. So uh, what is your uh, feeling? It was good. Like the only problem is I did not finish it. Otherwise, it was good. Um, you don't have to finish, um, you know, um, but uh, okay. Uh, so structure why uh, first of all what score would you give yourself eight okay uh, so why eight uh, it was overall good I think the structure was good I create a report I mm -hmm. did information gathering I asked about their concerns so I know their expectation mm -hmm. at two like different times and information giving, I would give it, and then I try to do that chunking that you said, like mm, more. But not I enough, would, okay. <laughs> oh, it's not enough. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, that would be. Uh, okay, yeah, I, I agree, it was it was very good. Um, the only thing, I, I mean, the, the only comment is, now, first of all, you shouldn't ask the name. If it's a GP practice, you know the man. Uh, uh, yeah, I wasn't they, sure about that. I didn't like because you told me if it's rural, I should not ask. I don't know if it's GP. Like it could be the first time, right? Yeah, no, no. GP practice is the same. It's uh, oh. basically patients are registered with uh, GP practice. When they make an appointment, they know your name, and uh, when you call them in, you know their name because uh, they are your patient anyway. So uh, it's it's usually. Uh, um, it means that you know the patient uh, anyway. Um, you can use any random name. You can say Mr. Johnson or anything, okay? Um, the other thing is um, um, you use the, um, the, the word concern or expectation. No, we don't use those with patients. This is, these are our uh, terms. This is our terminology uh, to describe the... Um, uh, to describe the communication skills or consultation skills. We don't use them for patients. We don't say, what is your idea? What is your concern or your expectation is this? Okay, so we, so we shouldn't should use I this. Replace it with, like, what should I say instead of concern? Uh, what, what, uh, what would you want to ask? Uh, just say, so, so are you worried about this? Or so you can just say worried about, uh, oh. um, okay. So we don't say what's your concern. Um, yeah, um, a concern is a bit more formal that, than worried. Uh, so in terms of communication with the patient, it's too formal. Okay. Um, we usually say, so uh, are you worried about a uh, brain tumor then? Uh, so that's, that's what you're worried about, a brain tumor. Or um, uh, what's your expectation? So, um, so you just say, so the reason you're here is uh, because you want to uh, find a, a treatment for this headache. Is that correct? And then they say, uh, well, actually, it is because I want an MRI scan. Um, okay. So we don't actually particularly use those uh, te that terminology. Um, information giving, I think, yeah, you, you can be a little bit more uh, 
uh, pausing and respect uh, responsive. Uh, uh, basically say that, uh, well, um, just a couple of sentences and say, is that okay? Um, and allow the patient to speak. Um, uh, yeah, there was something else. Um, mm, aha. Uh, regarding the, um, uh, the empathy, uh, you wait for the patient to finish the conversation and then you show empathy once. Uh, it's better to say, oh, mm, say, oh, all right, okay, mm, oh, uh, it must be difficult, to, yeah, uh, slowly, uh, quietly. So can uh, I sit while, while the person is talking? Yes, when he's saying I have, I'm in pain and this happens and that happens and um, when it's, uh, when the headache comes over, it is so bad and so you need to actually say something uh, while you're actually uh, showing you're listening attentively, you can also show in the same way, you can show empathy, say, oh, oh dear, mm, must be difficult, okay, mm -hmm. all right, so um, you don't have to say it loud to interrupt the patient, but the same way that you say, okay, uh-huh, right, mm, oh dear, oh, must be difficult, so bad, oh, I understand, okay, I see. Uh, so uh, basically, uh, you, you you can practice that, and it, uh, you can do it naturally. Um, when whenever the patient says, um, uh, um, they uh, not in this exam, but later they might actually look at how authentic your uh, empathy is, and rather than just saying the words. Um, and uh, so if you can uh, do that authentically, if you can say, oh dear, mm, all right, ooh, mm, I understand, yeah, it must be difficult, yeah, yeah, oh dear. Uh, so, uh, yeah, so if you can do that, uh, that is much better. In any case, uh, you, you did show empathy and you, you, you do get your, your check mark or your tick box, uh, but uh, yeah could be so uh, basically empathy uh, uh, while listening uh, to difficulties uh, which can be along with uh, um, attentive listening uh, uh, prompts okay we, we call that a prompt uh, so you, you're prompting that you're listening um, okay uh, chunking uh, more, um, I think. Uh, Structure-wise, it was okay, and uh, avoiding uh, uh, avoid using uh, eyes. Uh, yeah, there was a joke, and uh, uh, the doctor said, the junior doctors, um, have you ever been iced by a by a GP? Or <laughs> so, uh, basically, junior doctors say, "Well, what is your idea? What is your concern? What is your expectation?" And uh, the doctor said, "Well, I went to this doctor, and he iced me, and said, <laughs> in the first minute, he said, what is your idea? Your concern? Your expectation?'" In uh, US, if they say you're iced, it means you're getting deported because <laughs> I the deportation agency. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> uh, right.